Yo, 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 it's ODB, our lifestyle podcast. But hit you guys with a flip through, something a little bit different. Just gave a quick preview there. Today I am inside, all right? You've seen a change of scenery here. Of course, um, I took a little break from doing the flip throughs, but believe me, I have not thrown the towel in. So looking forward to kind of getting back on track with the mini trucking magazines, but I wanted to dive into something a little bit different today. Thanks to everyone that continues to come back here, watch the videos, like, comment, share, you know how we do. Also, everyone that checks out the podcast, thank you very much. Just search OLP via any podcast app for the most part, and you'll find us. So sitting here uh, reminiscent about uh, some of the old features, looking at my desk, my workspace, and getting ready to jump into Hot Rod Magazine. Now, believe it or not, this is back July 88, which is pretty cool. Um, predates Mini Truck and Magazine. We'll talk about it. But I was also uh, reminiscing, looking back, getting ready for some interviews, um, thinking about my understanding is Derek, who owned this truck, has passed away, the blue Mazda, and doing some Intel recon on this issue uh, because I found an old photo that I had saved. I forget who had sent it to me and um, was kind of figuring out where it was shot for the cover and things like that, which this was September of 2000. But with that being said, let's get this stuff out of the way and let's jump right in. Let me see what's going to be best. Probably the regular view here. Um, this is a cool issue. I want to say that either Radar or Jason Redden had post one time, posted this one time. And I was a little bit intrigued because I didn't remember seeing it. And then I was able to go out and, um, you know, pick up an issue. Mine is not in the best shape. You can kind of see here. It's kind of torn, but I wasn't too concerned with that, especially when I bought it. You basically have mini trucks galore. You see there July 88, $2.50. Hot Rod Magazine. So this is pretty cool. Um, if you can think back to... You know, whether you were in it, I wasn't in mini trucks at that time, uh, to be quite frank. But if you think back to that era, uh, you know, you probably had these hot rodders, you know, going to shows. And then all of a sudden, you know, especially in California, they start seeing this, you know, all these mini trucks. And and it was cool to me that Hot Rod Magazine did this um, this early on. You know, again, mini truck and magazine uh, basically wasn't even really out at this point. Uh, the summer issue uh, came, you know, that, you know, the same year. So around the same time, maybe these guys call it wind of it, who knows. But um, you can see here in the table of contents, uh, you see Hot Rod July, the world's most widely read automotive magazine, which obviously that's pretty cool stuff. It's cool that they're still around today. And then you see there, uh, page 53 is where we're going to jump to. But uh, I'm not going to go through this entire issue, but I do love seeing... Uh, some of these old ads, it just blows me away uh, what marketing was like then. So, uh, oh, look, who's been tracking me? All right. So, Mini Trucks Maxi Tricks. And because I'm inside, I got a little bit better lighting, which is another good thing. I'm going to try to jump out here to a wider angle. I think it'll maybe help a little bit. This um, This is a pretty cool photo shoot. In my opinion, um, you have Felipe Don, D-A-N-H, maybe is how you say it. And um, this wasn't something you would see too often. Sometimes you would have covers and rest in peace, Steve Stillwell. I think, you know, he talked about in one of the early street trucks, like he had a, a uh, an editorial where he talked about X marks the spot. And he kind of talked about some of those. And Brian McCormick, obviously, it might have even been him that wrote it. But I think it was uh, Steve, rest in peace. Um, talked about, you know, some of these setups for the covers, like when they would do the toolboxes and, you know, obviously they'd have models and stuff. But this to me is a little bit different because you could see they're by a pool. So, you know, it took some finagling to get these trucks around. It looks like the backside of a house. Then you have, you know, the dude here laughing, right? Probably one of the hot rod guys or something. You see uh, a Mazda, what, two Mazdas, right? Um epic for the time you know static dropped graphics on the lower side like even this by today's standards super clean then you've got the guy in the tilt bed and you've got two chicks here and I, I don't know i just love this i mean it just captures that era she's um 
hitting a switch and he is falling from the truck into the pool. Uh, if you look at the caption here, I'll kind of zoom in so you can see it. Cupertino Cali, where Apple's from, loves playing with her remote controlled double diamond hydraulic bed. You can see there, got a taste of the pool. Bob Sager, that name sounds familiar. D bought a base model 87 Mazda B2200 and then had so-and-so apply the candy graphics over the stock metallic blue she then lowered it to the max so kind of cool it's like her truck anybody know these people tag them or share it with them when you guys be able to see it but check that out graphics by santini you talk about og i gotta get him on he he i believe you said that he'd come on but like to me like this era you could see there kind of the backyard um Man, tilt bed, you know, maybe not even by today's standards. I mean, those wheels aren't bad. I mean, they, they're almost reminding me of smoothies. But, I mean, look at the hairdos of the era. I mean, I remember, you know, the chicks in middle school and, and whatnot. But, I mean, dude, just that. Not even bagged, just lowered with a dancing bed. Like, sick, dude. I also like um, the magazines would do this oftentimes. I think in the later years they would do it digitally but you could see the hot rod magazine license plate and uh when i saw this again it might have been radar and shout out to the west uh, west coast influence uh go to minitruckfilm.com and you could buy the west coast influence which is that documentary style dvd or blu-ray that ties into our scene steve stillwell rest in peace is also on there many others including ernie as well rest in peace so in case some of you guys want to take a screenshot or uh, read this uh, i want to remind you guys i keep forgetting that when i upload this i do do it in 4k so i think many of us have our setting on our phone or our tv set to optimize right or whatever the best resolution or based upon bandwidth but if you ever want to get you know a closer look or maybe read this uh, flip your setting up to 1080p or uh, 4k because you know i'm filming this in 4k so uh pretty good look here again of that first page so page 53 so this is where it gets awesomer is that a word so it wasn't just like a one trick pony as far as one page so what they did was they did this feature um, and they highlighted different people. OJ Wilson of Oak Town. Hip mini truck and bands include Run DMC, LL, and Heavy D and the Boys. Pump up the volume. Heavy bass funk makes the sheet metal vibrate and the earth tremble. Then you see this. Now, this is freaking awesome. Not only do you have a true old school mini. But, dude, like, this is the era right here, dude. They captured it. The BMX bike. The freestyle bike. I want to say it's a mongoose. If anybody knows for sure. I'm trying to look um, at that where that the frame bends right there. But uh, at first I thought it was a Haro. But then I was like, man, those handlebars look like a mongoose I have. Uh, here... Uh, so let's let's go here. 21-year-old Ed Dominguez dreams of building a street rod, but in the meantime, he sold his first car and bought a Rec 74 Courier. Look at that. Those graphics are so clean. You can see he's got the hot rod tag on it as well. Again, up here you have O.J. Wilson. And then here, check this out. 84 Nissan, perfect example of the super clean and detailed trucks we found at Resolutions, the annual New Year's weekend affair. So probably shot December 87 going into January 88, and that's kind of where maybe, you know, like this feature may, may have been done, or, you know, maybe one of the guys went, went out there and were like, man, there is like truly a big craze of these trucks really popping up. We've kind of established that the trucks came, you know, if you look it up, they came from the late 50s into the 60s and 70s. But 
really, I think like mini trucking really started to evolve in the, in the late seventies, like when the Chevy love came out and you know, that people were with the gas crisis and stuff like that. I mean, any, you could slice it any which way. I mean, you could argue, yeah, they were even customizing them earlier because there were some truly even older school stuff than this. But the way I see it, like you get into the, the late seventies, early eighties, like things are really popping off. Uh, there's been a big resurgence as well of just minis. Um, Brian Good from Grinder TV and I talked about this like probably over a year ago and he said, man, there's a bunch of mini truckers on the West Coast that like don't even, they weren't even a part of the original movement of minis. And that's not a slight against them. Like, you know, all the, there's just so many clubs that have either came back or they're out there cruising with the lowrider guys and it's pretty freaking awesome to see. Um, it, it just blows my mind how many clean trucks are out there. Here you've got a pretty cool setup, NSSN, and then, you know, it ties into the tailgate there. I mean, you talk about, I remember seeing this going, wow, like, there, there were people in the late 80s. I mean, great, Hot Riders have been doing it a long time, but, I mean, a full chassis, upper and lowers, chromed, chrome intake cover. I mean, the motor's not even sealed up in the front. You look at... Um, Inside of the wheels, color matched. I mean, sick, sick stuff. While most mini truckers are only interested in stance and cosmetics of their usually daily driven vehicles, quite often you get a lot involved here. Frame off, uh, obviously, is what it's talking about. That looks like it's show coverage because you can see the lifted truck next to it. Mini truckers often owe their visual impact to their swiftly activated hydraulic beds. And this was an era, too, that you guys will remember, like, just like what we saw a minute ago, where the truck uh, was, you know, static drop, but it had a hydraulic bed. And then, of course, everything underneath the bed is super clean. Jack Esperanza, 85 Nissan, features a tilt bed hard top. I mean, you know, think about it, too, just boom, being able to have a convertible without the price, potentially, of a convertible, whatever those were at that time. Crazy Mirror, Beverly Hills Sport Coupe, Mid-City Minis, Miami Vice, Phoenix, Arizona, Mini Vice, sorry, my brain is programmed to Miami Vice, which shout out to DJ Mays, he uses a similar logo, uh, download Twitch and check out DJ Mays Radio, he's our homie, it's free, so pretty cool stuff here. You've got an ad for the army and some more radness. But look, let's, look, let's look at this first. Radio Shack, free catalog, 30 watt dash, finest high power AM FM stereo cassette. Look at that bad boy. But let's jump over here. Virtually any mini truck can be tricked out. At the recent Mini Truck Super Nationals in Victorville, Cali, we noticed at least one representative of every make. Mini truckers are really big on Euro look and Aero body kits, right? Mazda in the works if you make all the white moves. So you can kind of see the front license plate, what they're talking about there. You get the Texas tail or whatever you want to call it. White wheels, static. I mean, super clean truck, right? You know. Imagine cruising that high school, right after high school. Here is a late model Dodge Dakota factory involvement in the Coors Race Truck Challenge is also indicative of the, uh, the market's health. And I went through, I forget if I did, I have a sport truck where they highlight the different versions of the Dakota when they came out with the convertible. Um, that's obviously customized, but um, we will, I'll talk more about that in some of the sport trucks I've collected. So, Bus or Busse, like many, many truckers, preferred low bucking his custom paint job by applying graphics over the stock base coat, which is still obviously a popular thing. But again, you can see this is, I don't know, I'm guessing Rezo. See the palm trees, super sick, wheel swapped. And then here you go. This is a pretty cool photo. I think I shared this one a long time ago. A few people have. With their tops off, many uh, trucks become roadsters in the purest hot rod tradition, jumping in and out 
a la James Dean becomes a game that doesn't go unnoticed. Bill, it's 86 Yoda. It's on 15s. Inkies, though. So pretty cool stuff, right? I mean, look at the era. Mini truckers look a lot different now, don't we? So pretty cool. Now, you would think, hey, that's it. They're going to wrap it up. But guess what? There's more. So check this out again. Hot Rod Plate. The Pink Panthers Revenge. 18-year-old John Krasner. Santa Monica paid $6,200 for his first new car. An 86 Nissan base model. 300 ZX items. Trick wheels. Again, cool colors. Obviously, maybe wouldn't be what we would do today, but uh, still for the era, spot on. Skateboard. The skateboard look is quite popular on the West Coast. Enrique Romero of Rosemead traded his narrow custom wheels for 15 by 9 progressives. 86 and a half hard body rolls on mag wheels. Is that what they called it? Skateboard look? Hot Bodies Club. And then you see Nissan N-I-S-S-A-N. Kind of a little play on words there. And then, boom, they can't forget the classic. We had um, Johnny Garan Johnson, Hardcore Garage, on recently. And he just did a whole S10 takeover. Look him up on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, hardcore... I forget if it's Hardcore Garage on Facebook, but man, they got a bunch of S10 guys together. Scott Andrews, S10 Beverly Hills Sport Coupe, is dressed in a Tony Nancy Aero package. Kreger Pro Tech wheels, tonneau. Super clean. A lot of us would probably daily that every day, no, no problem. And it's funny because for a long time, like, the ground effects became kind of, eh, maybe wasn't the cool thing. But, I mean, the parts are hard to get these days. And then, boom, I think, I think this is the last page, I think. But it was a pretty good write-up here. I mean, they, they didn't just do, like, one page. You see Santini's name again, Kevin Vaughn's. Dana Police's 83 Toyota. I guess that's her name. Pretty cool, though, showing them taking off the convertible top. I mean, dude, what an era. The boyfriend and the girlfriend go cruising. Shit, convertibles are not cheap. So to be able to cut a roof off, I mean, I wish a company would come back out and start making kits like the Radical Tops. So, again, July 88, you see that down there. Tilt bed, um, just... A lot of this stuff is coming back full circle. I mean, we're, I think many truckers, we've realized that, um, you know, it's not all about having the craziest, you know, a, a big part of our scene is about, you know, building crazy stuff and, and doing all that. But at the same time, the simplicity, there's, there's the beauty in that as well, in my opinion. So I'm going to get back to some sport truck.com checking out some of the street boutique I think it was tim parker wasn't it um and i certainly appreciate everyone that continues to come back here again this is a little bit of a, a break from our mini truck and magazines we got to get through all of those we're around issue 50 i think last time i left off bounced around a couple times we'll usually just get back on track make sure you subscribe share this with the homies the chicas you know uh, the club mates and 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 we appreciate that. So, ODB, stay on the rise. We got a couple new guests coming up, and I forgot to mention on the last episode who those guests were. One um, is going to be hopefully Brian Gendro, and then the other hopefully is going to be Stuart Daigle. I don't know what order they're going to go in. Stuart might be first, but we also have a couple of best of episodes that are going to be mixed in there. So. The next five or six weeks are going to be fire, and we're going to keep the pedal stomped into twenty, uh, the rest of 2022 and then into 2023. ODB, we out to you.